all great decisions start in the mind. You've got to have the resolve before you'll ever act on it. So let's talk about some of the things that we want to help start putting in our kids' minds. Interesting, sitting here with two men who do not think safe sex is enough. Why not? Well, I'm deeply concerned about the safe sex movement because, well, for one thing, sex is not safe, in my opinion, outside of marriage. The reason is, is because mm -hmm. today we have sexually transmitted diseases and the physical side, and parents tend to talk mm -hmm. about that, but we also have right. the emotional issue. 25% of teenage girls who have sex are clinically mm -hmm. depressed. Yes. That's huge. That is huge. And emotional why, why don't we know that? Well, we should know it. Now we it's, do. Yeah, now you know it. <laughs> yeah. But it's interesting because people downplay the emotional side. Right. And we're going to talk about this more in the later segment, but, but understand that emotional bonding is just as powerful as the physical right. thing. And the kids, when they get involved so early, they don't realize all the damage it's doing to them right. because they get so connected and ripped apart again. Right. And one of the issues of safe sex is we think that's intercourse, but you know, sexuality is much more than intercourse. Right. So you talked uh, in the earlier segment about oral sex. Well, that is sometimes more intimate than than regular sex. And yet, but, okay, of course I agree with you. That's what our generation says, but the kids are saying it's not. They say mm -hmm. it's casual, it's no big mm -hmm. deal. So I'm just saying, how do I fight against that yeah. as a mom? How do I really help them understand that that, it's, that is intimate. Well, I think we have to teach them what I call the purity code. And I think we have to teach them the code to purity, not intercourse, but purity. You know, in my past life, I would talk to kids okay, about- Okay, you do realize that you sound like you just took us back about 500 years. I know, well, actually- Okay maybe even 5,000 years, <laughs> yeah. but, and kids might say that. But you know what, kids want to raise the bar. They, uh, yeah. they want the standards. They actually know that mm -hmm. if they have had sex, that a lot of them are pretty disappointed in it. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I think yeah. we need to raise the bar. And again, I sound like I'm old fashioned, but yeah. many parents aren't gonna disagree yeah. with me on that because they, now it's communicating to kids to ra raise the bar, yeah. go for purity. But, but understand that parents, you gotta catch this. 67, almost 70% of kids would say after they've had sex, they wish they hadn't. Okay, wow. so, so, so don't think that everybody's doing this, no big deal, just your kid's gonna do it too. Now we know as counselors, all the years we've been doing this, that, that, that great sex in marriage doesn't come from a whole bunch of sex as a teenager. Right. It actually is the mm -hmm. opposite of that. Right. The greater freedom there is from sexuality before your marriage is actually gonna give you greater freedom after your marriage, and statistics are in that side. You can call it archaic, you can call it old-fashioned, you can say 5,000 years, but the point is, that's the truth, and that's what happens in marriages. I, I, you said a word purity. Now, are you right. meaning abstinence? Well, I do believe in abstinence before marriage, and I think that's the safest sex. You're talking about safe sex. Well, the way to have safe sex is to is to abstain until marriage. Mm -hmm. Now, now some people are going to say, "Oh, that's so old-fashioned." Yeah. But I've never met somebody who's abstained, and then when they got married, said, "You know what? I'm really glad." They're, they say, "I'm glad I abstained." A lot of people who have been sexually promiscuous would say, back to that point that you said, Dave. You know, I, I wish I would have waited. Wow. Okay. Now listen, I was in a University of Mexico and I was doing an English class actually on a difficult topic. They asked me to do that with these Spanish speaking yeah. students. So we talked about AIDS and the problem of AIDS and how we could wrestle with this world issue of AIDS. Right. And we get talking on and on and finally one student raised his hand and said what and in his broken English. He said, it would seem to me that it all be solved. It was simply one man and one woman for life. If you never had sex with anyone but the person you married, it would solve AIDS, wouldn't it? And they just kind of sat there and they'll go, Okay, well, we yeah. even just kind of sat there. <laughs> yeah, but it's interesting right. because it's so countercultural right. to think that, well, no, everybody's doing it, kids are all doing it. The point is, there are kids who still aren't doing it, right. and you're healthier for it. Because right. with the proliferation of sexual partners before marriage, it takes away the ability to bond. Okay, so what do we say to parents who, perhaps in tears, because they're part of that 70% that we're getting, but they're looking at you and saying, Dad, I, I have had sex. Mm -hmm. So if we're going to keep this dialogue going, now what are we saying to them? Okay, first of all, I think you gotta say, hey, it ain't over now. People make mistakes, but let's learn from it. And talk to your kid, hey, listen, we've all made mistakes. I've made mistakes, you made mistakes. And, and realize what you can change from here and make those steps. What do you think? Oh, I agree with you, absolutely. Yeah. Just because a kid has made a mistake, it yeah. doesn't mean that it's over. Yeah. And so what we have to do is help them understand what mm -hmm. caused them to go that yeah. way. Learn to discern what yeah. took place in their yeah. life. A lot of kids make sexual decisions based yeah. on emotional involvement that exceeds yeah. their maturity level. Well, yes. if that's the yes. case, then we may need to work on their self-esteem. We, need, we, need, yeah. we may need to be working on other issues than just the uh, sex drive. Okay, yeah. and, and on that note, we've got this texting and this emailing where kids mm -hmm. are emotionally saying things and right. going places yeah. with their whoever they're texting to, you know, far beyond. And so the physical just go, goes like that. How do we slow them down? Kids are prematurely getting connected 
okay, yeah. with this emotional side. And, and you got to understand that the emotion sometimes runs ahead of the physical. Sometimes they're jumping in bed and there's no f emotional contact. Right. Basically, it, there has to be a healthy uh, engagement between boys and girls as they're growing up. you got to learn how to communicate and all that dating stuff. That's healthy, but it doesn't have to come with the, 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 the partnering of the sexuality along the way. We just encourage to defer that, wait for that. Obviously, we think wait until marriage and save it for marriage. But, but, but it's not a stupid thing that's just you know, that's, that's not vogue okay. anymore. It's, it's got to go that way. And then what do you say to the teenager who just says, I, d I am going to be sexually active. So I, I've mm -hmm. listened to what you said, but this is my life, my right. choice. Well, it is their life and it is their choice. And even as parents, there's not a whole lot we can do. We can't lock them up in the closet. At the same time, we can say, well, here's what some of the consequences might be. Yeah. So when they have that experience, they're going to see some of the disappointment. Yeah. And so, hear it again yeah. in right. their head. So it's parents having dialogue. You don't have to uh, be your kid's best friend, you'd say, look at here's what I believe strongly. Here's what, you know, we feel. At the same time, sometimes we have to also teach them what is going to go yeah. down the road. That's, That's right. excellent. That's oh, right. I like that. And, and those consequences are critical to lay out without it being the guilt trip. Right. right? To, and you know, if the kid has kind of blown it, even feel that, you know, if you don't talk and speak up and, and give them room to grow, then what happens is they're going to carry that guilt. And I've had too many kids, maybe you too, Jim, that, that have just gone back into more sex with more people because whatever, I've blown it now and it doesn't matter. It does matter. The more you can save till after your marriage, the more healthy your marriage will be. Believe me, I've counseled 750 couples premaritally. I know the truth. Now, if parents, you need help, you need help in teaching your kids about sex, go to the website, marriageuncensored.com, and we got our best tips on how to talk to your kids about sex. Stay with us.